everyone welcome back to fpl fran today's video is going to be my game week 30 team selection and after two weeks of international football i'm so excited to get back to fpl content and looking forward to some premier league games which we've sort of missed out on i've been watching international fixtures even spain for example my home nation one loss and one draw of course so a pretty timid showing in terms of the international fixtures but we move on unfortunately so right now of course in terms of gaming 30 the landscape is such that i think a lot of managers are looking towards transfers towards salah but at the same time i think the reality is when we look at our defenses for gaming 30 it's dire and so i want to talk about that later on but just before i touch on gaming 30 i just wanted to shout out all the people who have subscribed to the channel so far this season thank you guys so much for the support we've almost doubled the subscriber growth year on year in fpl so that's been incredible and a lot of it has come recently as well thanks as well to you know a lot of the luck that i've had in terms of rising up in rank and and, and some people maybe watching the content for the first time so thank you guys out there who have been watching the content i hope you guys have been enjoying particularly the cheat sheet series if you do watch the content and you're not subscribed around 50 percent of viewers are still unsubscribed so please feel free to press the button. Our goal is to try to get to 30,000 subscribers at the end of the season. Uh, liking the video, commenting also really helps with the algorithm. So that's it. That's all I'm going to say on that. Um, but in terms of reviewing last week, I did talk about this on my sort of transfer plans video, but I did free it on Gaming 29. And part of that, of course, is that I didn't want to invest too much into Spurs players and I didn't want to invest into, you know, a Tony or a Gibbs White going forward. Now, of course, if I invest, invest into Gibbs White, I suppose I could have done without a free at 29 because... Free at 29 was so bad for so many managers. And even, for example, the regular role towards 29. I saw some people taking hits within their regular teams to go for Regulon, and that didn't work out well. Obviously, for people like myself, uh, we free hit with Regulon, so that wasn't great either. And I got 28 points, which is nice because we got the Chris Wood and Gibbs White differential points, which is more than enough. It feels like I have a little bit of ammunition to take hits in the future. And I just know the reality is that I have to take hits because, unfortunately, of course, the landscape in FPL is such that you either take hits for example let's say in previous weeks where you go for like these Bournemouth players on smaller double game weeks or even for example when we go back to let's say game week 26 right after the Liverpool double game week a lot of people were taking hits there to try rectify their team so because I wasn't able to to take those hits since I wildcarded early I do think that the reality is that in this back half of the season of course I am chasing the pack in the sense that I'm probably maybe a few transfers behind and I need to take hits and I'm totally comfortable with that so it's nice of course to have that sort of free uh, points in the bank technically per se from last week where I was around eight points above the safety margin of game uh, 20 points so that was nice in terms of the free hit but totally understand that I I'm going to be playing a chasing game and we'll have to go with the best picks possible to try and maximize the short term as well as the long term so with the fixture landscape being set up I talked about this in the transfer plans but it does make sense to actually invest into maybe some Chelsea or Newcastle players because they have really good short-term fixtures but at the same time they could actually end up being really pivotal pieces to my team for gaming 37 with a team like united who also have a really good double gaming 37 you're looking really at maybe transferring them in around gaming 34 or a little bit earlier just if you need you know that sort of make weight money to get towards a sala or a darwin at the same time though obviously targeting gaming 34 particularly within my own trajectory it does make sense to look at wolves players and potentially of course even let's say additional arsenal bournemouth players but i obviously right now i'm tripled up on arsenal i don't have any plans on going triple bournemouth again since Nessie is probably, unfortunately, someone who's going to be leaving my team shortly. Unfortunately, the news was confirmed that Irela said that he's still out. And of course, with the three deadlines coming up, gaming's 30, 31, and 32, basically coming within effectively a week's space of time. So you've got a Saturday deadline, a Tuesday deadline, and a Saturday deadline. It is so unlikely that I think Sinesi is going to play these fixtures. And it's really unfortunate for me because if I, let's say, went, went and took a hit for Zabani maybe two weeks ago, I, I could have really done with, let's say, Zabani starting within my team this week. This week, unfortunately, I'm, I'm going to know for sure that I won't have a sort of Zabani who gets to play versus Everton at home. I won't have him versus Costa Palace at home. And I won't have the Luton fixture as well. So that's the, the, that's the reality and the sad reality. So we do probably need to be spending a transfer around Sinesi. Part of that as well is even though Sinesi has a double game week 34, I just think that it's very unlikely that I actually keep him within my starting lineup for game week 34. When game week 34 rolls around, I think I'm, I'm very likely to actually invest into potentially an Everton defender. And that would already give me the three defenders that I actually need to play the game week out. And I can't really see myself doing anything else so that's sort of the the rough plan in the future as far as obviously transfers this week though that means that my transfers will be focused on defense a lot of people are going to plan for Salah and, uh, and that makes sense right you can take hits for Salah this week he's a very good captaincy option potentially a vice captaincy option as well depending on, on how you let's say think about Sun and his fixture versus Luton but one thing that I think a lot of people need to be reminded of as well is that this Brighton team still aren't a joke right they're fourth in terms of expected goals conceded yes they've conceded a little bit more than they're expected 
but they're still a pretty competent defense. Yes, of course, Liverpool are at Anfield, and you have close to a full-strength squad back, which is nice, but it's not like Salah is a runaway favorite for captaincy. So I don't think this is necessarily the week where you have to take a minus four for Salah or a minus eight for Salah if you need to sort of rejig your team around. In fact, it probably actually makes sense to maybe do that on Game Week 31 instead, which is going to be my plan right now. I think in the short term, if you look at my team, unfortunately with players like Gabriel, Saliba, they don't have a great fixture this week. I also have down to you as a terrible fixture. So it's very unlikely I'm going to be able to put out a competent defense. So what I would like to do instead is actually field a, a much better defense this week. And I have a couple options as well. So we'll talk about option one, where I think that the, the logic is just to do one transfer. And option B is going to be another transfer, but it kind of leads me towards a different direction. So let's go with option number one. Option number one is if I make a transfer towards Malo Gusto. And the transfer out would be Senesi. So Senesi would be going out for Gusto. In this situation here with uh, Senesi out of my team, it does actually free up a little bit more money in the bank for me. So by doing so, I would have 3.1 in the bank compared to right now what I have, which is basically 2.9. And I'd have Neto as my starting goalkeeper for this week just because he's got a home fixture. If he doesn't play, not the worst thing in the world. I've got Flecken at least, who's a substitute keeper. So we did talk about, you know, previously how Irola mentioned that Neto could lose his starting position in the team. Seems to be unlikely, but of course, if it does happen, we have a backup keeper at the bare minimum. We've got Pau Torres, who finally has a good fixture and is finally fit and ready to play a game of football. And he will be playing here versus Wolves at home. So that's actually one good defender. And then I'll have to reluctantly play one Arsenal defender versus uh, Man City, because I think I still would much rather play an Arsenal defender over someone like um, a Doughty. And obviously, it's just a toss up right now between Saliba and Gabriel. Personally, I still think that Gabriel is the larger goal set piece threat, and that's sort of borne out in the last two seasons already. So I think Gabriel is going to be the option that I go with. Obviously, there are situations and circumstances where Saliba is slightly better due to bonus, but I think I'm going to hedge my bets with Gabriel here, hoping that Arsenal can get a clean sheet as well. But that's a very, very small shred of hope. And that's going to be my defense for this week. Very weak. A lot of people might have stronger teams because they've actually been carrying forward their sort of Tottenham's players, and that's totally fine, right? If you've got a Spurs player, Poro, Udogi, even Romero potentially, you're going to have a much better defense than me, and I just have to accept that, right? Uh, going forward, so in the midfield, we'll be fielding Son, Palmer, Fernandes, and Saka. So this is one of the last weeks where I anticipate that I'll have Fernandes in my team. A lot of people are looking at Foden out or Saka out to get Sal in their team. For me, that player will be Fernandes. And ultimately, this is probably Fernandes' last best fixture up until Game Week 34. So it goes back to the point where I was talking about these United picks and how we're probably going to be transferring them in Game Week 34. And around that time, probably instead, what I'll be doing is going into Garnacho who is obviously very, very cheap and can prepare me for both 34, but also later down the line, Game Week 37, when I'm bench boosting as well. So the plan here, of course, is to go with Son, Palmer, Fernandes, and Saka. I do think that even though there has been talk about his sort of Achilles injury and his lack of participation with international fixtures, what we did get over the international break was a tweet from Team News and Ticks, who is a pretty well-known sort of Arsenal leaker in the past, at least, or someone who at least has, you know, inside information, I suppose, within Arsenal. And he's mentioned effectively that Saka has been dealing with this injury all season long. It's, it's of course, this uh, recurring sort of Achilles injury. And probably what he needs is, you know, a long amount of time in off-season really to actually get rested from it. Unfortunately, of course, there's also the Euros. So we'll see how Saka manages. Um, but he has been able to manage fine this season. And this is one of his worst fixtures, right? This is probably actually his worst fixture of the season. But Saka is still an incredible FPL asset. And he's still the Arsenal penalty taker. So I will be fielding Saka this week. And reluctantly, I have to play him anyways because I've got Pedro Neto who's injured. So you can see, obviously, I've been ransacked by injuries with uh, a lot of the players and, and, and sort of options that I went for in wildcard 26. Sinesi and Neto already biting me very, very hard. Uh, but Pau finally back to hopefully deliver something, uh, which is probably going to be nothing. But let, let's just move on. And then in the forward line, I'll be fielding Holland, Watkins, and Solanke. So these players all have good fixtures with the exception to Holland, of course, but Holland is Holland. You know, he does have the intangibles in the sense that he's very much like Salah, where even in the tougher fixtures, you don't really mind playing Holland, you know, worst case scenario. Even, for example, with an FPL challenge, I still think he's one of the top four or five forward options for this week, and I'd still probably pick him. In terms of bookies odds, he's still the leading goal scorer outside of or with exception to Sun. So when we talk about forwards, actually, specifically, Holland is up there. And so he's a very good pick still for this week. And going forwards, of course, it makes sense to actually move into a Salah plus Holland structure, which is my loose plan, as opposed to moving away from Holland and sort of playing a hokey-cokey game between, let's say, um, minus fours back and forth between Salah and Holland. Because the way it works, really, in terms of captaincies is Holland is a very easy captaincy option, giving 33. Salah is a very easy captaincy option, giving 32. 
uh, so on and so forth. Then it kind of rotates between Sun, Holland, and Salah for this time of period. So it actually makes a lot of sense for my team to be built around that. And I'll talk about my future transfers as well in a moment. But that's basically the transfer for this week. So Gusto in for one free transfer. That would leave me with, of course, zero free transfers for next week, which means that hits will be taken. And the hits that I plan to roughly make in terms of transfers in the future uh, would be to either go towards a Darwin or a Kunha. And obviously, I'll be going out of Watkins on Gaming 31 because he's got a bad fixture. He's versus Man City. So this is a very unique opportunity for me to actually just simply think about going out of Watkins and going to Darwin or Kunha, as I mentioned, and also going out of Fernandes and simply going to Salah. The only issue with doing that is I can't afford to go from, let's say, Watkins to Darwin without actually doing an additional transfer. So to get towards the Salah and Darwin structure that I really want to have for Gaming 34, where I'm going to have a very strong team, what I would need to do as well is probably move Neto to either Garnacho or Sarabia. The reason why I quite like Garnacho is because, yes, of course, Sarabia has better fixtures in the short term, but ultimately, I'm going to bench Fus on Gaming 37. And also, Garnacho is going to have a great fixture on Gaming 34 himself. So the way I see it is that, let's say, Sarabia and Garnacho are very close as options. If I'm not restricted by price, I still kind of like Garnacho because I think he's going to pay off more as a long-term pick. And I'd rather keep Garnacho within my team because, who knows, Sarabia is also someone that we've seen can get subbed off a little bit earlier. Now that they're actually so desperately sort of underwhelming, I, I suppose, with the attacking options that they have in Wolves. You can probably say that's a guarantee for Sarabia to have really good minutes for the rest of the season. But who knows, right? Whereas I think Garnacho is probably still going to be locked down with his position, the team. He's played really well. And ultimately, I have more faith in United as a team going forwards than, let's say, a team like Wolves. So I kind of like Garnacho as a pick. And I'll probably actually make that minus eight next week as well to go for Darwin. And part of the the sort of thinking about Darwin has to be about things like, you know, Jota is coming back soon. Liverpool are still involved in a lot of competitions, including Europa League. So how, how do we manage that situation? You know, it depends on whether Darwin really has, for example, suffered from a knock within the international break, which obviously precluded him from playing with Uruguay again. Maybe what we need to see is actually whether Darwin plays significant minutes versus Brighton. And that will actually lead me to a direction of whether I go for someone like Kunha, ignore the Neto transfer so that I don't have to take a minus eight on Gaming 31, or I go, you know, knees deep into Darwin and go straight for him with a minus eight, which would include me taking out Neto, who unfortunately seems to be injured for the rest of the season and won't play any part in terms of the Wolves double game making Gaming 34 out of my team and, and sort of rectify my team like that. And ultimately, that's what happens, right? When you have injuries, you probably have to actually take additional hits compared to the rest of the field, and I have to do so. So that's the plan, roughly if I do the Gusto move. What I like about the Gusto move is it still allows the Darwin transfer. Now, the alternative option, which is going to be option number B, is going to be going for Pedro Porro instead. So the second move here would be to go for Senesi to Pedro Porro. Now, what I don't like about this move so much is unfortunately it does lock me out of Darwin completely for Game Week 31. So in the previous sort of option, I had two paths to go to, I had two paths, right? I could either go for Kunha, um, for, a, for a minus four, or I could go to Darwin for a minus eight. Obviously, uh, the hits really are being taken so that we can get Salah into our team and captain Salah for Gaming 31. But on the flip side, you know, what if we, let's say, don't prioritize Darwin so much? What if Darwin, for example, we predict him to play very, very many minutes versus a team like Brighton, and maybe he actually gets a little bit of rest versus Sheffield United. Maybe that's the situation. And maybe in that situation... Um, if I, let's say, don't have confidence in Darwin's minutes in the short term, and maybe even around Game Week 34, when Jota is set to be back with the team, what I could do instead, of course, is just simply go for Pedro Porro. Because I think, still, in theory, Pedro Porro has a better fixture than Malo Gusto in the context of how easy it is to attack this Luton team, right? So these two players are both attacking fullbacks. So if I just compare Gusto to Porro, ultimately, Porro is someone who's going to deliver more. When you look at the underlying stats this season, he, he is far clear of Gusto. Gusto is still a very, very good attacking fullback. In fact, I still think he's a top three Chelsea player. And I'm not too concerned really of, let's say, the impending return of Reese James, whatever that means, because ultimately he's going to take a lot of time, I think, to get his rehab right. It doesn't make sense for Reese James to get thrown into the deep end anytime soon. I still think Malo Gusto is going to see out a lot of the fixtures for Chelsea. And that's the risk that I'm prepared to take. Whereas obviously if I go with Poro, there are no risks, right? You just know that Poro is guaranteed as long as he's not injured. And ultimately, that's something that's quite beautiful, because when it comes to Game Week 37, if I have Paul on my team, he's going to be a very key part of the bench boost as well, I suppose. So that's the alternative option. However, what that means is that I'm just forced into locking myself into 
that minus four for Kunha. So instead of actually being able to take a minus eight for Darwin, which I know a lot of people don't like anyways, because why would you take an additional hit for Darwin? Um, but look, it's versus Sheffield United home. So if I have the opportunity to do that, you know, I will take that. I have taken risks like that this season and I'm comfortable doing so. Even took a hit, for example, in the week where I lost a lot of points versus Watkins, who ended up being totally fine. And, you know, we, we've done well with that. So I would take that risk here. But unfortunately, that risk would be closed off with the P P Pedro Paul option. So all I could do next week is do Fernandes out, Watkins out for Salah and Kunha. And potentially that's still going to be a very strong move, right? Because Kunha, if he, let's say, he has really positive news in, in the press conferences tomorrow, is very likely going to play anyways. And we, we can make that decision on Kunha um, after the press conferences as well, because maybe I would have a little bit more confidence in terms of Kunha, and maybe that would be totally fine uh, in terms of getting Pedro Porro as well over Gusto. So the big difference is that difference in price between Porro and Gusto sort of locks me into another option. Another thing that I thought about that could be quite interesting this week is if I'm fully invested into the idea, and this would be option C, of course, is if I'm fully invested into the idea, as I said, that uh, Arsenal would concede versus City, because obviously it's such a tough fixture, you're away from home, we expect City to score anyways, and unfortunately, Downty is still a t terrible option, but we want to keep these Arsenal defenders anyways. Why not, for example, take a minus four for both Pedro Porro and Gusto? Because in theory, the these are two very good players, right? In the short term, you've got a wonderful game week 33 for Porro. You've got a wonderful game week, sorry, a, rather a game week 32 for Porro, as well as Gusto, and obviously game week 30. And even in game week 31, one of the issues with uh, Senesi being out is if Senesi can't make it to this game week 31 fixture, what I would need to do, of course, is actually take him out of my team and... If, if I look at my team with only one transfer being made, let's say I go for Gusto, I still have to play Gusto versus Man United next week. So why not, for example, go for Poro instead, who could be still slightly better than Gusto in the short term, and maybe look at that as a transfer option. And that's, of course, something that I think is quite interesting because ultimately, Poro is going to be very good for Game Week 37. We know he's going to be locked in. Gusto, if he if let's say Reece James doesn't come back or if he's playing into mid and minutes, then I actually have a really strong bench boost and I would have gotten both of these players on their best fixture in the short term on Game Week 30 and actually maximize that whilst, of course, still having the opportunity to bench Gabriel within my team. And I think that, that could be something that's quite interesting, even though the hit might look bad in the short term. So that's something that's quite nice. Once again, though, this locks me into the Kunha option and maybe it's not so good. So those are my three options this week. Um, I also did consider Connor Bradley as well. I know a lot of people will be asking about Connor Bradley because, of course, with Senesi going out of my team, unfortunately, I miss out on a good player who actually has a good fixture and gave me 31, right? Anytime you get to face a team like Crystal Palace at home, you love that fixture, and I'm going to miss that out, unfortunately, with Senesi in my team. So, of course, a lot of people will be asking, why not just go for Connor Bradley instead? Because Trent, it seems like, based on the latest news, is going to arrive um, back with this Liverpool team at maybe the Atalanta fixture. So the implication of that is actually Trent's going to miss out as well on that Man United fixture. So we need to see what, what's going on, obviously, with sort of Trent's recovery. The Atalanta fixture comes uh, right after Man United versus Liverpool, which is going to be at Old Trafford. So that technically gives Connor Bradley three games of full football versus United. And maybe, who knows, the, the injury for Trent could be worse. His minutes could be managed. And you could even get Connor Bradley with Liverpool versus Crystal Palace. What I don't think is going to happen, of course, is that Connor Bradley is going to be a serious option giving 34. I don't see that happening. So, of course, if I go for Connor Bradley as a transfer, um, the issue that I sort of felt that, that I would always be dealing with is that he's always going to come out of my team game 34, unless, of course, a miraculous sort of um, setback happens with Trent's sort of recovery process. And maybe that could happen, but um, I don't really want to take that risk now. But it has been enticing. So but really, for me this week, it's it's about getting the right defender. Um, Poro, Bradley, or Gusto. Bradley and Gusto are obviously nice because they still allow me to go for that really, really um, risky, I suppose, Darwin move. But I like it the most in terms of the short term and maximizing gaming 34. And it's very easy to transfer Darwin later down the line because he's just a very simple transfer to Isak, maybe around gaming 35, 36, things like that. So that's going to be my team section for this week. I, I am expecting right now um, all things considered to go for the Gusto option, which is option number A, because I think it keeps myself open. And I think long-term, Gusto is probably still going to be a better pick than Bradley, even though I'm going to lose out in having a very good team for Gaming 31, which would be the case, of course, if I have Bradley within my team. So those are my immediate thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a lovely game week ahead, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care and goodbye.